Okay, this position was sent to me by one of my students. It is a unlimited or money game and blue is on roll. What is the proper cube action? Should blue double? And if blue double, should red take or drop? What do you think? Blue is on the bar, and uh, this is scary. If blue comes in hitting, red's going to get gammoned a bunch and not win a lot. And, of course, if blue doesn't hit, red still doesn't look like he's got the greatest game in the world. And the email that I received from my students said that he dropped this like a rock, and he was shocked to see that it's a take. He said that if he gets hit, he's in horrible shape. And if he doesn't get hit, he still doesn't like his game. And this illustrates a very, very uh, typical human reaction to scary positions like this. I like to say it's the glass half empty, half empty syndrome. You're always looking at what could really go wrong. And one of the reasons is there are a lot of things that can go wrong here. This is a very scary position. Let's look at the answer. It's a big take. Um, here it is rolled out. It's a huge take. It would be a quite a large blunder to drop. But the glass half empty syndrome means that you're sure you're going to get hit here and you're sure you're going to get gammoned when that happened. And even if you get lucky and you don't get hit, you're still pretty sure you're going to lose this game. You only look at the downside, and that's human nature. I mean, we're risk averse. We're trying to avoid major risk. Figure you drop this cube, you lose a point, and you're done. You go on to the next one. Instead of having the pain of playing this out and often losing four points and still losing two points most of the time when you don't lose the four points. Why are we risk averse, especially when you play backgammon? Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Most of the time when you take a cube, you're losing. And most of the time when you take the cube, you uh, would have been better off, you think, by not taking the cube because you would have lost one point instead of two for getting gammons. So you always remember very, very well. You feel the pain of taking the cube and losing the two or the four points. And we forget that you only need to win about a fourth of the time to make up for those losses to be to come out ahead taking instead of dropping. You need to understand that concept of why even though you're going to lose more uh, more times, you lose less money or points by taking than dropping if you have more than a net of 25%. And you can actually take with a little bit less than 25% because of the value of holding the cube. The cube's big, the ability to read the cube. So the other thing is you remember the times that your opponent comes in in situations like this and he rolls a 4-2 or a 4-6 and hits you twice or a double 4 and hits and covers. There are five killer rolls for blue here where he comes in and hits twice or he comes in with a double 4, hits and makes the 5 point. Five rolls and you will remember those five rolls a hundred times more than the other 31 possible rolls where he doesn't you twice. That's the human nature and that's why you are afraid to take cubes like this. So why is it a take? The numbers don't lie. The numbers will tell you that you can take enough if you realize that the value of gammons is only half as much as the value of winning and losing the game. Your net gammons loss here is 25. 25 times 0.5 is 12. If you subtract 12 from the 37 games that you would win, you have 25 wins. Your take point because of the cube vig is around 21 and a half. Another way to do it that I prefer to do it is the using gammon adjusted take points. If you have 25 gammon losses and you multiply that times 0.5 because again gammons are only worth half as much, that's 12 and a half. I add the 12 and a half to the 21 and a half um, and you get uh, 34 and that means 34 would be your gammon adjusted take point which is three points below what you are winning, so it's a take. Or you can use a different formula that I won't get into right now where you can add the 12 and a half gammons to the dead cube take point of 25, giving you 37 and a half, and reduce it by one-seventh 
to get a more accurate gammon adjusted take point. But that's not what this lesson is about. That just proves that the math is right. How will you get this into your head that this is a take? One thing is to look at these rolls. Of course, if he comes in hitting with a 4 or a 3-1, that's what hits this. Or a 1-6, one, 1-2, one, or a double 3 hits this. Or, of course, those numbers that I mentioned before, the big joker numbers. And you add them all up, you'll see that quite often you will get hit once. And then picture what happens when you get hit once. 20 times you come right back in. When you come right back in, often you come in and safety the other checker. Often you'll come in and hit or cover or all kinds of good things happen those 20 times. When you don't come in and hit, you don't always get hit. Uh, the second checker doesn't always get hit, whether it's this one or this one, but let's say it does. You still have a, an opportunity here to anchor on the ace point or five point, and you'll still win quite a bit if you do, and you won't get gammon that much. The glass isn't always just half empty. Keep in mind, though, that there's quite a few rolls where you don't get hit at all. And when you don't get hit, it's actually 13 rolls where you don't get hit at all. And there are a couple rolls where he dances, and you have a quite a, an interesting game if he rolls a 2-6, 6-2, two, six, six, two, double 2, or double 6. But even if he just comes in not hitting, you could easily be a 55, 60% favorite. And holding the cube gives you even more. You have a, a, a pretty good game. So if you don't get hit, it's not that bad a game at all. You're happy to have the cube. And if you do get hit, you could turn this game around and win enough. But how can you look at this and intellectually know that it's right to take this cube? Most people would drop this cube. I agree that most humans would, would not take this cube. You have to play it out. You have to take this position and play it against extreme gammon or have extreme gammon play extreme gammon or play it yourself and make sure you play it perfectly by using the tutor mode or hit mode and play it out a few rolls over and over and over again and you'll see how often even after you get hit you still have some game here of course there's going to be times where you get completely slaughtered and blitzed and gammoned uh, virtually every time but there's still going to be plenty of games where you can win and the way you can intellectually overcome the glass half empty syndrome and start looking at the glass is also half full. Uh, in this case, it's about 37% uh, full and about 63% empty, but that's enough. Uh, you, By playing it out, you'll get to see how these positions work. But the reasoning that goes into it is, is you once you see that you're wrong, once you see that it was a 22% error to drop this cube, it's up to you to use whatever strategies it's going to take for you to be convinced that you should take this cube so that you can take cubes like this next time and see what it would ha what, what it would uh, require to change this position to make to make it into a drop or into no double this would be a drop for example if red had another checker exposed if red had a checker on the bar if blue had another inner point made if blue had another checker shooting at this checker there's all kinds of ways to turn this into a big drop and there's all kinds of ways to turn this into even a no double if red didn't have this blot or this blot possibly or if, bl if blue had less points so you need to play with the position so that you can at the end of the day say oh yeah I would take this cube next time I can see why this is a take of course you also need to think about in match play at different scores is it still a take or is it a drop would this be a take at three away three away at three away three away the uh, gammon value is still a uh, 0.5 but uh, what happens at three away three away the take point goes up you have to have a better position to take at three away three away so you'd have to do a little bit more work on uh, the adjustments and use 25 percent uh, as my as your live cube take point that's what I use 25 percent is my live cube take point instead of 21 and a half and at three away three away this would really be very very close and you know I'm not even sure I haven't run it I don't know uh, my guess is it's still a take I think the numbers still work if you take uh, 25 times uh, 12 and a half uh, and add that yeah it's very very close it's right on the edge and you get the cube vig involved so 
I, it's probably a take at three away, three away, but it's very, very, again, very, very close. Uh, thanks for watching. This video is available to anybody who goes to the Facebook page and sees it. I'm showing this as a sample of the kinds of videos that I show uh, exclusively to USBGF members. And I do usually do anywhere from two to four a week. And I have guest um, uh, experts like Matt cohn uh Stick, Perry Gartner, John O'Hagan, uh, add to uh, or give the lecture itself on various positions. And um, they've been very well received. They cover virtually every area of the game. Um, this alone might be worth the price of membership to the USBGF, uh, along with the tremendous other benefits that you get. So if you're not a member of the USBGF, I would urge you to join, if nothing else, just to support the organization that is working very, very hard to promote and grow backgammon throughout the world. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.